Sunday service. This is Pastor John Enyeto from Tabernacle Faith Ministries. This is a great time. This is a great day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are. I want us to just join in this worship this moment just to bless the Lord. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We worship you, my God. We worship you, Jehovah. Thank you, Father. No one like you. We choose to bless you this morning. We choose to thank you this day. We choose to say, oh, Abba, Father. We choose to say, Eze, we thank you, God. You are mighty. You are able. You are able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what we think or imagine. We thank you for this day, my God. We thank you, Father, for the people that shall come on live, oh, God, to listen to your word. We pray that this day, this month, King of Glory, shall be a month of blessings, shall be a month of anointing, a month of a new season, in the name of Jesus. Oh, you're the God no one can shut. Yes, Lord, you are not a man. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Let's just join in this worship right now. You're the God of everything. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. Like you. No one like you. Master, you're the God of everything. Like you. We 
worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are amazing, God. You are great, God. Hallelujah, Father. We worship you. We honor you, Jehovah. We bless you, King of Glory. You are awesome, God. You are not a man, King of Glory. You are our King. You're the God of everything. No one can show. No man a man, oh, you're not a man, oh. you're the God of everything, no one like you, no one like you, Jesus, no one like you, no one like you, Eze, no one like you. Like you, no one like you. You're the God of everything. No one like you. You're not a man. You're not a man. You're the God of everything. One like you. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, we bless you, Jesus. I want to see one or two or three people join me right now and we start our service and we start the message in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you. The Bible says where two or three people are is in our midst. You, Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, oh Jesus, no one like you. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, oh Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, oh Eze, no one like you. No one like you, Father, no one like you, you're the God of everything, no one like you, no one like you, no one like you, Father, no one like you, hallelujah, Jesus, we bless you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Like you, my Father. One like you. You're the God of everything. No one like you. No one like you. Yeah, Father. No one like you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Time to bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. No one like you. You're the God of everything. No one like you. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We thank God, Jesus, for this great time, this great moment, this great morning, afternoon, and evening, wherever you are. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this time. We honor you because you're amazing. We thank you for the word that you're going to give us, King of Glory, Holy Spirit. Minister to us through this word because we know that you are with us. You are with us right now. For those who are watching, I pray, God, bless them. Open their minds to receive this word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. I want us to go right now to the book. Open our Bibles. Let us open our Bibles in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse uh, 4 to 10. If you're there, you can open your Bible from the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 up to verse 10. Hallelujah. I want to read right now. When the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Hallelujah. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. 
And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I'm a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send unto thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Hallelujah. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. <clears throat> See, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, and to throw down, to build and to plant. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to go deeper in this word. I want to believe God that, yes, we will receive this word with power and uh, blessings in our lives in Jesus' name. The title of my message is The Release of Destiny. Hallelujah. The Release of Destiny. That is the word I'm sharing with you today in the name of Jesus. I must ask you how many of you are ready for your destinies? How many of you are ready for your destinies to be released in this country, to be released beyond boundaries? God is able to release your destiny beyond your city, beyond your boundary, beyond your, your village, beyond wherever you are. Hallelujah. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise God. And today we are going to be with this young man called Jeremiah. Today in this service, praise the Lord. And we are going to see a man whose destiny was released by God. I believe that many of you want to believe God that he releases your blessings. He releases your destiny. But I want to take you through this story of a young man called Jeremiah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak unto me, say not. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send you. And whatsoever I command you, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver you with the Lord, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. <clears throat> See, I have this day set forth over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to declare today that this week God will release your destiny. God <clears throat> will release your destiny in the name of Jesus. But let us start with the word destiny. What is destiny? The word destiny is an abbreviation of the word destination. It has to do with where you are going in life. So when we're talking about destiny, we're actually talking about destination, where you are going in life. The God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, has no business in wasting his raw materials by creating people who are not going anywhere. Hallelujah. He does not waste his raw materials in creating people that have no destination. So God has already created you and me for a destination, for destiny in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when we're talking about destiny or de destiny, we're talking about destination. Hallelujah. And it has to do with where you're going in life. Destiny also can be translated as a predetermined course of events. So when we're talking about destiny, we're talking about predetermined course of events. 
The Bible says that God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you, I sanctified you, I cleansed you, I purified you. So the word sanctify in the Greek language is kadiosis. In, in Hebrew, makadesh, which means to, to keep something aside as a precious material. Hallelujah. So, before God, you are so precious. You are so fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Emily, for joining me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So before God, you are so precious. Before God, you are the apple of God's eye. He knew you before your daddy. He knew you before your mommy saw you at birth. Hallelujah. He gave your name before your parents gave your name. Hallelujah. The release of destiny. So he has called you precious. No one sounds like you, my sister, my brother. No one talks like you. No one has your fingerprints. If you walk outside, people are able to identify you by your voice. Why? Because you are special. Hallelujah. And God told Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. You are fully packaged already. Everything that you desire in life, you already have it. Why? Because God is a programmer. God knew you before you were born, before anything in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God does not allow a person to be born into this world before thinking of what he has for that person. He does not wait until you are born and then sit down to think and plan for your life. He has already done that in Jesus' name. The only thing you need to do is to discover what God created you for. So long before you were born, he had packaged that that was, that was meant for you. Even before you were born, Jesus, God had already concluded your matter in the name of our Father. Hallelujah. Of destiny. I am declaring that from this week, yes, God is going to release your destiny. If you don't know your destiny, God is going to reveal it to you in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10, that declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, say, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Hallelujah. God declares the end from the beginning. Is a God who already finishes before he starts. That's the God we are serving. As Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blame before him in love. Hallelujah. So before the foundation of the world, he had already known about you. He had already planned for you. So you are not a mistake. You are not here by accident. Hallelujah. You are not a mistake. You are on appointed time. You were a finished product. You were a finished product. Hallelujah. So where you are going is not in contention. We know already where you're going. Hallelujah. That's why when I look at you in your face, I can tell who you are. I can tell you and say, hey, you will get there. I will tell that you are meant for, for progress. You are meant for success. I look at you and know that, yes, you will get there. And I'm speaking to you today. You will get there in Jesus' name. Do not give up in life. Because you have a great destiny. You have a great destination. Your de destination in life is not in doubt. It is already pre-orchestrated by God. Praise the Lord. That's why, that's the true brother. You know the Bible says, Paul said, we are foreknown, foreknown as Romans 8, chapter 28, up to 30 says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined. To be conformed to the age 9 to 30. The Bible says, I am destined for glory. I am destined for glory. Hallelujah. I am not destined for shame. You are destined for glory. You are not destined for shame. You are destined for glory. Hallelujah. 
It is not about shame. But God has destined you for glory in Jesus' name. Paul was speaking to the Philistine, to the Philistine church. Philistine church in Philistine chapter 1 verse 6. That being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So being confident of this thing. That he who started that good work. That work you are doing for God. That assignment. That mandate. He will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Paul said, he who began. You did not begin it, my brother. You did not begin it, my sister. He began it. You didn't need to cry to be born. You didn't, know, you didn't have to pray to be born, but he predestined it. He's the one who began it. Praise God. So don't dare say the devil... The devil can stop what God has begun. The devil has no right over that. If God has destined you for divine health, you will walk in divine health. If God predestined that you'll walk in success, no one will make you a failure. If God had planned that, yes, you will live abundant, prosperous life, hey, do not believe that the devil will stop you because, yes, be confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good thing, he will accomplish it. He will bring it to completion completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you begin something and God is not in it, I tell you, you're wasting your time. But everything you must begin must be in line with the will of God. If your destiny is God, if your ideas are in God, if your ministry is within God, if your salvation is in God, I can assure you God will finish it. Praise the Lord. If you come into the Lord, if you walk in the Lord, when you trust in the Lord for anything, I can assure you, you will succeed. He who started it will make sure that you progress in life. That you move in life. That you run in life. That you triumph in life. That you move in victory in life. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 verse 9 says, That was the true light. which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Mark the word true light. The Bible says that was the true light. which lighted every man that cometh into the world. So the word light, true light, when you, walk, when you carefully mark that word, and mark the word every man, when a man is to be born into this world, it means that God is aware. And when the man is about to be born, his light comes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that was the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world. <clears throat> so there is true light. To every man. So when a man is born in the world, God is aware. And when the man is about to be born, then his light comes. Why? To imprint the agenda and the program of God in that life. Hallelujah. So when the day you were born, there was true light that came upon you. And that light there was to imprint the agenda and the program of God. In your life, hallelujah. So everyone born carries the program of God, including that madman on the street. That man has the program of God. That woman who is on the streets, who is sleeping in the, in the, in the streets of, of New York, wherever. That man has a plan of God. That man is in the program of God. He's not there by accident. Why? But to fulfill the destiny of God. That light is meant to cause an ignition of fire. When you have the light in you, it is supposed to ignite fire. It is meant to help you shine in the dark places. Hallelujah. So in you there is light. And so you have destiny. And so you have success. 
everyone born has an equal capacity to shine. Unfortunately, many people are not shining. But for you, I can declare, you are going to shine. Only those who discover their purpose are the ones who will shine. I'm talking about the release of destinies. So the Bible says, before you were formed, I knew you. Before you were formed, in other words, while you were not yet formed, when you didn't have an identity, before your parents thought about having you. Oh God, I knew you. So when something is not yet formed, you even don't know what it is. But here God knew about you. The only thing you need to do is to identify what is your destiny. What is your destination? Man sees finished product. But God sees even before the process begins. Hallelujah. God said, I knew you before you were formed. So before you were formed, before your mother carried you in the womb, I knew you. That's what the Bible says. Before even the devil knew you. <laughs> God knew you before your father knew you, knew you before your friends, before your neighbors, before your countrymen knew you. Jesus says, I knew you. I knew who you were. Hallelujah. The question is, do you know who you are in the Lord? Do you know who you are? I knew you means, I knew you means that you were and supposed to be in life. I know who you are supposed to be like. I already predestined you. God is saying, I am not confused about who you are. I know who you are supposed to be. So don't struggle in life. Go to the Father in heaven and ask him, God, what was I called to do? What am I? Who am I? Hallelujah. Because let me tell you something. The God whom you and I serve. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is a God of plan. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of design. He's a God of objectivity. He's a God of prophetic destiny. And today you can claim it and say, Lord, I want to walk there. I want your plan to be activated in my life. I want your purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I want your purpose to be established in my life. Lord, re desire. I need to know who I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I knew you. When he said that, his meaning what he meant, I know your abilities. I know your potentials. I know your endowments. I know what you are cut out to be. That's what God is saying when he told Jeremiah, I knew you. I knew you before you were born. Meaning God knows, hallelujah, God knows your abilities. Sister Emily, I hope it is already working out. The broadcast is okay now. I pray that it is live and it's better now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I pray that God may clear the waves for you to hear and understand and get the word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so when the Bible says, I knew you, Simply God is saying, I know your abilities, I know your potentials, I know your endowments, I know who you are cut out to be. The way God knows some people is not the way those people know themselves. The way God knows some people, and some people don't know who actually they are. When God says that you are a great man, some people don't understand, they don't even know. That they are great before the eyes of God. When a man knows what God knows about him, his journey to destiny begins. But when a man doesn't know his journey, if he doesn't know his journey, his destiny is interrupted. His destiny is hindered. His destiny is blocked. So do you know who you are? Some of you, God looks down and he sees a warrior. But in your own eyes and the eyes of the world, they see a weakling. Some of you, you even fear. But yet God has said, I've given you the spirit of boldness and sound mind. 
Listen to the story of Gideon. The children of Israel sinned and the Midianites oppressed them for seven years. One day the angel of the Lord found Gideon in his cave and he said to him, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. <clears throat> that is Judges chapter 6 verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. That was a shock. It was a shock to Gideon. Listen to me. <laughs> yes, Gideon had not fought a single battle. He had never won any battle. In fact, he was hiding in the closet. He was hiding in the baggage. Yet God found him out. God found him out. If you find someone hiding somewhere, you will call that person a coward. <clears throat> when you find somebody buried with his head buried down in fear, you just know that man is a coward. But the angel of the Lord did not see cowardice in Gideon. He had been hiding for seven years for his oppressors when the angel saw him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to what the Bible says. The angel said, God is with you. Why? The angel didn't call him that because of the exploits that Gideon had. He called him that because Gideon had a destiny. Hallelujah. Gideon had a destiny. God has not called you who you are because of where you stand. He calls you for what you will be tomorrow while you are going through the challenges of your today. Hallelujah. So God doesn't look at the present situation. God doesn't look at the present trials. God doesn't look at the present temptations you are going through. What God sees is your tomorrow. Hallelujah. That's why Gideon ran back and said, Father, God, I have never done anything. I've never succeeded in anything. I am the least in my family. <clears throat> as Gideon was hiding as a coward, never fought any battle, never fought any kind of war. Here the angel comes and says, you mighty man of valor. <laughs> you mighty man of valor. Oh my God, that would be a great shock. And the angel said, the Lord is with you. Praise the Lord. I say, God has not called you who you are because of where you stand. He calls you for what you will be tomorrow while you are going through the challenges of your today. Thank you so much, my great sister, Sissy from Qatar in the name of Jesus. Share this video and make comments in the name of our God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So the angel said, this is the way heaven sees you. For Gideon saw himself as a nothing. Gideon saw himself as a, a weakling, as a coward. But the angel said, God is with you. Heaven, he said, heaven does not see you as a weakling. Heaven does not see you as a failure. Heaven does not see you as a poor man. <clears throat> heaven does not see you as a, a hustler, as somebody who is struggling in life. Heaven sees you as a prosperous man. Heaven sees you as a blessed woman. Heaven sees you as a man and a woman who is mighty in valor. Hallelujah. He said, you are mighty man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so whatever people talk about you, whatever people say about you, you have destiny. You have a destiny from God. You were predestined. Hallelujah. You were predestined to succeed. You were predestined to go from glory to glory. You were predestined to walk in divine health. You were predestined to walk in uncommon favor, in uncommon success, in uncommon salvation. You were predestined to move from glory to glory in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Look at the way Gideon saw himself. As God was saying, you are a great man of valor. As God was praising Gideon. As God was, you know, excited about Gideon. But look at what Gideon said about himself. In Judges chapter 6 verse 15. And he said unto him, <clears throat> Oh my Lord, wherewith shall I serve Israel? Behold, my family is poor. <laughs> <clears throat> my family is poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. 
Now look at the contradiction there. God is already seeing the destiny of God, of Gideon. Gideon is busy talking about his failures. Gideon is talking about how he comes from a poor background. How he talks about his family in Manasseh is so poor. He's the least in his father's house. <clears throat> there are people who are watching me right now. You call yourselves names God did not call you. You are calling yourselves names God did not call you. <clears throat> you are calling yourself a failure. You are calling yourself a widow. You are calling yourself a nothing. You are calling yourself poor. You are calling yourself a destitute. You are calling yourself as oppressed. But God does not see you like that. God doesn't see you like that. Hallelujah. While God was calling Gideon as a great man of valor, here, v, uh, here, here Gideon is busy talking about his background. He's talking about his race. He's talking about what people are saying about him. <clears throat> but when God called him, he said, hey, Gideon said, I'm the least in my father's house. My father, <clears throat> my family is so poor. We can't afford three square meals. We can't pay our rent. We can't meet our needs. In our home, I am the least. <clears throat> I am the last man. I'm a poor man. We come from a poor family. We are sickly. We don't marry. <clears throat> we don't produce. We are buried in our family. Nobody has ever succeeded. That is what Gideon was talking about. I can't do this. I can't do the other. <clears throat> when I trust my, my generations... From my father and my grand -great grandfather, I see nothing. That is what Gideon was talking about. <clears throat> this is how Gideon saw himself. Now listen to me in Numbers chapter 13, verse 31 up to 33. But the man that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched. <clears throat> unto the children of Israel, saying, The land th through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, <clears throat> which come of the giants, and we are in their sight, we are in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we are in their sight. <clears throat> now listen to me. Moses had already sent over 10, 12 spies to spy Cain and the place that would flow with milk and honey. But the Bible says when they came back, 10 of them came with a negative report. Only two, Joshua and Caleb had positivity in their report, in their testimony. <clears throat> the 10 were complaining and were saying, my friend Moses, the place where we went, that land, it is its own what? It's, it's its own inhabitants. The men that we saw were men of great stature. Hey, we look like, like grasshoppers before them. In our own sight, listen here. These ten spies with a negative, with a negative report came and said, we looked at ourselves. <laughs> We gauged ourselves. We weighed ourselves. And when we did that, we realized, oh my God, that we are nothing. That we are nothing. We cannot do anything. We can never succeed. And the Bible says, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Now look at these people. They did not have destiny. They did not know who they were in the Lord. They said, the land where we are, my friend Moses, when we try, we don't see any success. We cannot invade these people. But the Bible says, Caleb and Joshua encouraged the people and said, look here, we are carrying here the grapes of the place of the land, the land full with milk and honey. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The land full with milk and honey. As the other ones were complaining. Because... Joshua and Caleb had destiny. In the story of Gideon, God said, go in this might. Go in this discovery. 
There is power, let me tell you, in discovery. Someone this week, I must declare by revelation, you will put on mighty face. You will put on a mighty face to face the things that you are running from. Everything that has been challenging you, you are going to challenge in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So Gideon came out of his hole from his hiding place. And his men asked him, why are you going to fight? He said, an angel of the Lord had come and told me who I am and what I am supposed to be and do. Although I don't feel like what he said, but if God said I am a man of valor, I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. Hallelujah. The man came and said, hey Gideon, why are you going out? He said, no, the Lord told me I am mighty. From even when I consider my background, the Lord is saying, no, forget about the background. I am mighty. I am powerful. I am, you know, I am blessed beyond a curse. I am above and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. I am a lender and not a beggar. Gideon came to that understanding. He says, I am what God says I am. I can do what he says I can do. All that what Gideon needed was the discovery of who he was. Hallelujah. He had the angelic motivation. He had the angelic charge. I want to pray that today. God gives you angelic motivation. That he may give you angelic charge. That you'll know who you are. Gideon, you are not timid as you think. Hallelujah. Gideon, you are not the least you, you call yourself. Gideon, you are not poor as you say. Gideon, you are not a failure. You are in the face of heaven. Before heaven, you are mighty. Before heaven, you are a great man. Step into your destiny. Hallelujah. Step into your destiny. That was what God was saying and speaking to Gideon. And as he stepped into his destiny, every other person came. From their caves. I can tell you something. You could be the one hindering the progress of your clan. You could be the one hindering the progress of your family. You could be the one hindering the progress of your nation. Why? Because you call yourself a nothing. When God is saying you are a mighty man of valor. Praise the Lord. Until Gideon came out of his hiding place. The other 30,000 had to come out. When he aligned himself with heaven's view, 300,000, 30,000 men became bold. They said, we've got to fight the Midianites. Because his encounter with the angel equipped these men to fight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Think about that. It took only Gideon to know who he was. For the other men to rise up from their hiding caves. Seven years. Only one man discovered his destiny. You could be the one God is revealing this message for today. Once you discover your destiny. You might be the financial deliverer of your family, the financial deliverer of your clan, financial deliverer of your city in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> I don't know who you call yourself in your clan. I don't know who you call yourself in your, your, in your tribe. I don't know who you call yourself in your city. I don't know who you call yourself in that nation. I don't know who you call yourself in your family. <clears throat> but God told Jeremiah, See, I have this day. See, I have this day. Then after that, he said, Jeremiah, what do you see? Oh, my God. <clears throat> see this day. When God says, see, until you come to alignment with his word, destiny might escape you. But when God said to Jeremiah, see, and he saw, God said, what do you see? He did not ask him, what do others see? He did not say, what do others see? But God told one individual, what do you see? 
Do not see what the world sees. The world may see you as a failure. The world may see you as a sickling. The world may see you as somebody who, never, who can never succeed in life. But God is saying, what do you see in his word? What do you see in his logos? What do you see in his rema? What do you see? The question is, what do you see? He did not ask him, what do others see? He did not ask, what do your family members see? He did not ask Jeremiah, uh, uh, Jeremiah, what do your friends see? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God told Jeremiah, what do you see? Let me tell you something. When you have destiny, your relatives might be your greatest enemies. Your neighbors might be the greatest enemies. When you have destiny, the people around you might be the greatest enemies. But here God told Jeremiah, thank you so much, woman of God, for joining us. Share this video in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so God told Jeremiah, see, I have this day. I have this day. Oh, my God. That means God was saying your destiny is clear. Your destiny is assured. Then he said to Jeremiah, what do you see? Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. What do you see as yourself? I see myself as anointed. I see myself as a generational changer. Hallelujah. I see myself as a global evangelist. I see myself transforming and tra transforming the lives of people. Hallelujah. And changing destinies. Thank you so much for, Concy, for joining us. God bless you. Hallelujah. What do you see? Hallelujah. God did not ask Jeremiah, what do others see about you? No. Because human opinion, public opinion, will never give you the exact person you are. When they look at you, when they look at your dress code, when they look at what you're putting on, when, when they look at your background, many will tell you, hey, isn't this the son of the carpenter? Isn't this the son of so-and-so? What good will come from Nazareth? While people are saying like that, God is already doing something else. The question is, what do you see, my brother? What do you, my, what do you see, my sister? Praise God. It is not about what your family members are seeing. It is not what about your friends are seeing. It is not what about your neighbors are seeing. Hallelujah. That's why I'm not bothered by what others see. I'm not bothered by what, what others see, but what God has told me I should see. What do you see? And the Bible says, Jeremiah said, I see. Hallelujah. And then God told Jeremiah, now you see well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh God. Read Jeremiah chapter 1. I love that from verse 5. The Bible says, then say, I see an almond tree. I see. I see. I see. And then God said, yes, Jeremiah. And now you have seen well. Hallelujah. Praise God. When God has destiny for you, life becomes so easy. God begins to shape up things to your favor. That's why the one who has called and nobody becomes a someone. That's why the one who has rejected becomes accepted, becomes the chief cornerstone. When you have destiny, I can assure you, you begin to move from glory to glory. You begin to move from one level to the other. You begin to celebrate the victories that you had never experienced ever. When you have the destiny, heaven is on your side. Heaven is on your right side. Heaven defends you. I want to challenge you today that this week ask God, what is my destiny? What am I called to do? What is my purpose? What do you want me to do for you? And when that is done, I can assure you, you will walk in success. You will walk in financial breakthroughs. You will walk in abundance. You will walk in uncommon wisdom. You will walk in uncommon, un uncommon favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that for we are children, for me and my family, for we are the children of signs and wonders. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As I come to the end of this service today, I want to pray for you. I pray that God may anoint your eyes this week. That you may see yourself. That you may see who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talk to God and say, Father, anoint my eyes this week. Let me not see myself as others see me. Or as I see myself. But as you see me, my God. Tell the Lord and say, Lord, help me to know the things you know about me. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. You can pray over right now. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Anoint my eyes this way. Let me not see myself as others see me. As I see myself. But Lord, help me, O oh God, that I may see myself the way you see me, O oh God. Talk to God and say, my Father, O oh God, help me to know the things you know about me. Lord, reveal myself to, my, to me. Hallelujah. Release my destiny. Praise God. I want to believe that God has blessed you through this message today. The release of destiny. Once destiny is on your side, victory is assured. Hallelujah. Victory is assured. God told Gideon, the, Lord, the angel told Gideon, I'm with you. Because he knew that Gideon had a purpose. Gideon had destiny. Thank you so much for watching. Father, I pray, bless your people. I declare my God in Jesus' name, that you will anoint their eyes this week. May they never see themselves as the world sees them. May they never see themselves by the current pre prevalent situation. May they never conclude who they are by the trials, by the pains that they are going through. May your people never, Lord, come to a conclusion of whom they are simply because of the storms of life, my God. But I pray that they may see themselves the way you see them. When you say that, Lord, they are healed, may they be healed. When your word says, by your stripes we are healed, may they know that they are healed. When your word says, that my God shall supply all my needs, Father, they will come to know that truly, you are the supplier of their needs. You are not a miser. You are not, not a hand. You, you, you are not a miser, oh God. But you are the God who is the rewarder of them who diligently and who diligently seek you. I pray that Father help them to know the things they don't know about themselves. May they come to the revelation of who they are. Release their destinies. Bless them, King of Glory, that you will be exalted. We thank you, we bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to believe that you've been blessed. I want to believe that this message has come timely for you to know who you are and to claim your destiny. You are blessed. You are blessed. Thank you so much. And I want to share the grace with you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining me today. What a great service. Please, my contacts are right there. You want to have prayer, counseling, and partnership and contributions and our offerings, of course. You can always send through that number that's on the screen. See you again on Tuesday, on Wednesday at 9, 9 p.m. And then, of course, on Sunday we have a special program. Special program on Magic FM, a hundred, the frequency, a hundred. We are always there. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God bless you. This week shall be your great week of discovering your destiny in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, don't you? No one like you. No one like you.